Hi everyone, welcome to Theme Scout. In today's video, we are going to create this beautiful looking navigation bar with HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. So, let's dive in. I'm on Windows machine, and for this project, I'll be using Visual Studio Code. You can use any editor of your choice. So, let's first create our project directory. I'll name it project. Now, to open this folder in Visual Studio Code editor, we can easily drag and drop the folder in Visual Studio Code's icon and let it go here. This folder is opened in Visual Studio Code. Now, we need to create the required files for this project. Just click here. First, create the HTML file. Then, let's create our CSS file and our JavaScript file. We have created the files. So, let's go to the HTML file and create our markup first. If you are using Visual Studio Code Editor, you can use a shortcut by typing exclamatory mark and pressing the tab on the keyboard and you will get the starter code like this. Now, let's first link the external files like CSS and JavaScript. Let's start with the CSS file. We can use another shortcut type link clone CSS and press the tab from the keyboard and it links our HTML file to the CSS file. Now, let's link the JS file. I will use another shortcut, script clone src, and press tab. Now, write the file name inside the src attribute, and let's save it. In Visual Studio Code, we can see that if the file connected properly or not. To do that, press Ctrl and click on the files. If it takes you to the file, then it is connected properly. Okay, now let's check the JS file. I'm pressing Ctrl and clicking on the JS file, and it takes us to the JS file. That means the file is connected properly. Now let's get back to the HTML. Now let's create our markup. So, first of all, inside the body tag, we will take a header tag, and it will be the parent container. And inside this header tag, I will add a container div and give it a class of tc-container. All of our visual content will be inside this container div. Let's first get the logo for our header. I have already downloaded the logo. It's in downloads folder. I will bring it from there and bring it inside this file. Let's create a container for the logo. Let's give it the class of tc-logo. And here goes our logo. Now let's save it and run the file to see the output. Okay, so everything is working. Now we have the logo. Let's create the navigation. So, I'm getting outside of this TC logo, but inside the container div. And now, let's take a nav tag and give it a class of TC-nav. And inside the nav tag, we will take li tag. And inside li tags, we will take a anchor tag. For now, we can keep the href equal to hash. Now, let's copy and paste this. Now, let's just change the names. Okay, let's give it product. And for the next one, I'm going to name it services. And for this one, we can say portfolio. And for the next one, about us. And we can name the last one contact. This will be enough. Now we save the file and go to the browser. For now, it just looks like this. Let's first style the navigation. Now, for our HTML is complete. 
to make this navigation look like the one that I showed you in the demo, we have to first change the font because I used a custom font there. So let's get the font first. To get the custom font, we have to go to Google Fonts. And the font I used was Montserrat. You can search here. Here it is. So when you click on it, there are a lots of style available for Montserrat, but we don't need all of them. We just want the regular 400 and the medium 500, the semi bold 600 and the bold 700. This will be enough. After you choose them, there are two ways you can implement them in your project. One with a CSS link, another with a CSS import. So I'll be using the import method. So to use the import method, you have to just copy the import URL from here and paste it at the top. It's the convention to keep your import at the top. So let's save it, but still it will not work. First, we have to specify the font family. I'm copying it from here and I'm coming back here and I'm taking the universal selector and I'll specify the font family in here. Okay, so let's paste it here and save it. So let's go to the browser and see if the font has actually changed or not. So we can see that the font has successfully changed and it looks a bit better now. Okay, so let's remove the default margin and padding that comes with every HTML tag. So that's why we'll set margin padding to zero and box sizing to border box to keep everything concise. So let's save it and let's go to the browser. Now reload to see the difference. Look how everything hits the border now because there is no default margin and padding now. So that's why we target the universal selector and use primary styling first. I hope you could understand. Now the main focus for us in this project is to make it responsive on all screens. So here our approach should be different. We'll use different CSS units that are more responsive and that will help us to change the whole interface quite easily, just like RAM. Now, if you are not familiar with RAM, you can search for RAM. That on RAM to pixel. So normally on RAM is equal to 16 pixel. So if it is 16 pixel, it would be hard for us to use it precisely. So we'll use a simple trick to make it easy for us to use RAM more precisely and actually on RAM equal to the size of your HTML document. That means if the document font size is 10 pixel, then on RAM would be 10 pixel. So now we'll set the HTML font size to 10 pixels. And how can we do that? It's pretty simple. If we set the font size to 62%, then it means it is almost 10 pixels. Now, if we use on RAM, on RAM would be 10 pixels. Now we will be able to use this easily and accurately. So now let's go to the browser and let's see if the font size actually decreased or not. So it has decreased. Fine. So let's first come to the parent container that is TC header. First of all, let's set its width. It's really important for our parent container to have a full width. So it may collapse in different skins. So first of all, I will give it a width of 100% and background color of hash 1D, 1C and 1C. Now let's save and go to the browser. So we can see that background color has appeared. Now let's get back here. If we look, all the content is now at the border and we don't want that. Okay, we can fix by adding padding to the inner div. So we can target TC container that is in the interior. So we can target TC container and set its width to 90% and margin to auto. Let's save it and see the difference. Now there is a lot of space between the border 
and our content. So now it looks better. We want all these links and the navigation to be horizontally, not vertically stuck over each other. So we'll use Display Plex to fix this problem. I'm setting its display to Plex. Again, items to center and justify content to space around. So this makes this gap between the logo and the navigation. Let's save it and see the difference. So now you can see the logo is on the left side and the navigation is on the right side. Now just we have to style the navigation. Before styling the navigation, we can see that logo is a bit too large. So we should first resize the logo. To do that, we can simply target the container which contains the logo and then the image inside. So let's say TC logo and then IMG. Let's set the width to 5 frame. Let's save it and see the result. Let's reload the page. OK, so it looks better right now. Let's get back. Now let's style the navigation first. So first let's go to the parent container which contains our navigation. That's TC nav. Let's set its list style to none. Let's save and let's see what happened. So the dots are gone. Now let's come back here again. Now we want the list item to be horizontally placed. So for that we can set its display to flex. Let's save and see it's working or not. Okay. The list items are now horizontally placed. But there is a problem. Right now, we can see that there is no space inside our navigation. We need to add a bit of padding. So for that, we will add padding to the container. Let's save it and let's see how it looks. So this looks a bit better now. For now, this will be enough. Now, let's the links. Let's set its text decoration to none. Let's increase the font size a bit. We can increase it to 1.8 RAM. That means 18 pixels. Let's save and see how it looks. Okay, it looks quite better than before. But we need to change the color. It's a default color for the links in HTML. So let's get back and change the color. We will set color to hash FFA001. Let's save it and reload. Let's increase the font weight a bit. 600 would look good. Now we have to add a space between the links. They all are gathered here to a single place. We need gap between them. So to do that, we can use the gap property. We can add gap to the parent container where the display is set to flag. Now it will set 3 rem gap between every element inside it. Let's reload. Okay, now you can see there is 3 rem gaps between every element. So it is more convenient and better way to do this instead of margin. But if you remember our demo version, there were a lot more details to it. Like when we hovered on the links, the links turned white and there was an underlined form the left to right. So we still have to add a lot of details to this navigation. So first, let's design the hover effect. So let's come back to our CSS file and let's create the hover effects. So first, let's make the link turn white. When somebody hovers on a tag, the color will be white. Let's save and come back to the browser just to reload to see the result. So it's working. 
Now the links are turning white. Now let's create the underline. To do that, first of all, we have to add some code to the anchor tag here. Let's first make its display to inline block so that it does not conflict. Now set its width to 100%. Let's save it. And now we will create the underline. To do that, I'll use the sudo class clone after. For content, we'll keep it empty. Let's give it a width of 100% and height of 3 pixels. Now let's give it a background color of white. So that's messes with the links and let's save it. Now this won't still appear. I'm really sure about that. See, we still can't see the underline because we have to pass set its position to absolute. But before that, first we have to set its parent position to relative. So let's set our tag position to relative. So let's set anchor tags position to relative. And now let's set its position to absolute and save it. Okay, so now we can see the underline, but it's gone above. It's not in the correct place. We want it to be the beneath of the link. So let's bring it under the link. For that, we will set its left to zero and bottom to five pixels. So it will be five pixels away from the links. Let's reload. And now it is on the perfect place, but still we don't want it all the time. We only want it when someone hovers. So let's set the width 0% normally. And when somebody hovers on the link, then we want it to be 100%. When somebody hovers on the anchor tag, we will set its width to 100%. I hope you understand what I mean. Now it will be flashing. So we don't want it to be very fast. So let's add a bit of transition. Let's first set the transition property, then the duration and the function. Now let's save it and come back. And let's reload to see how it's working. So now it looks very smooth and nice. So for now, our primary design is complete. This looks fine. But the problem is, it's not still responsive for mobile screen and smaller screens. I can show you This navigation looks very nice on large screens, but when you shrink the screen, it will collapse at a point. See, it has started to collapse now. It has lost the background color. So there are lots of issues when it is comes to the small screens. So now we have to fix all this. And for mobile screens, we will build this navigation with the hamburger menu. We'll use a menu icon to open and close the navigation. So let's build a mobile version. So now we will design the navigation for mobile screen. We can do a thing. We can minimize the screen and keep both of them at once. Because to actually to show how our navigation will be on small screen. So let's make it a bit smaller and make the editor a bit bigger. Okay, that will be enough. Let's start by adding a media query of max with 560 pixels. On mobile, our navigation will cover the whole screen when it's opened. So let's first design the navigation when it's opened. Then we'll build the functionality and stop later. I'm targeting the nap container with contents all of our navigation links and I will set its position to fixed so it won't be scrolling and then I will set inset property to zero. If you are not familiar with inset, inset is a shorthand property for left, right, bottom and top. It takes four values at once and if you give a single value, it will take all four values. 
Now, let's save it. Previously, we added the background color to the header, but now our TC nav will cover the whole screen. So, we won't see the background color anymore. So, let's add the background color to it. Yeah, this is the color. Now let's save it and reload to see how it looks. Okay, our screen is above 560 pixels. So, media queries are not applied. So, when I bring it under 560 pixels, the navigation is covering the whole screen. Now, the menu is still horizontal. We want to stack them above each other. To do that, we already added display flex to div. Let's just change the flex direction to column. And now, let's save it and let's reload. So, we can see all the content is now stacked. We want all the links to be on the middle. So, for that, we'll set align items to center. And let's save it. And now, let's reload. So, all of our content is now in the center. This needs a bit more space from the top. So, let's add padding top to this. And I'll give this 15 view height padding top and let's save it and reload. Okay, so now it looks perfect. And this is still looking nice. So hopefully our mobile navigation design is complete. Now we will have to make it functional. Let's first bring in the menu icon. For that, I will use font or some icons. We can find the CDN from Google. So let's first maximize the browser screen and let's go to the new tab. So there are different ways we can implement font or some CDN. So let me first show you. Go to the official website. Okay. So if you want to get the CDN link from here, you first have to create an account here. And if you don't want to create an account, there is an alternative way. That's cdnjs.com. Just go to Google and search cdnjs.com and visit the first link. In here, just search for Font Awesome. We can see the Font CDN link is already here. Just click here. And we just copy the first link. And it's a CSS link tag. So, we'll paste it above our CSS link. Let me first enable the word wrap and now let's save it. One thing that is good to keep our own CSS file at the bottom because our written CSS will override the styles from external CSS. So, it's always good to keep them at the bottom. So, now we can use the font or some icon. Let's bring in the hamburger icon for our navigation. To do that, we will go to the font or some official website. We will visit the first link and go to icons and search here for bars. This is the on that we will be using. Just copy this, i tag and get back to our HTML file. We'll place it just above our navigation. Outside the logo div, I'll paste it here and to style it later, I'll give it additional class of nap toggle. Now let's save the file. Now let's close the tab and this one too. Now I'll make the screen larger and reload to see if it has appeared or not. Okay, so the icon is actually here, but we can't see it because it's black and very small. So let's start styling it. So let's go to the CSS and inside here. And now let's design the navigation button. Let's first create the font size. I will increase the font size to 3rm. And now change its color to hash double F double zero on. On fact, when the screen is smaller than 560 pixels, the navigation will cover the whole screen and the button will get covered. So we'll increase its 
z index so that is floats over everything so let's add the z index i'll set z index to 10 now let's save it and now let's reload the file and shrink the screen okay so the button has appeared now but not in the correct place so let's move it to the correct place from right we add 10 view height and from top we will add 2 rem and we have to set its position to absolute let's save it here and now let's reload so now it's in the correct place but for now it's just only an icon we will have to create its functionality for that we will have to use javascript before doing that there is one more issue if we make the screen large again the icon is still here we only want it for the mobile version so what we are going to do is we are getting out of our media query and target the icon then set its display to none so now it will disappear from on large screen now if i reload the icon has disappeared but now even it don't show up under 560 pixel that means even not in the mobile screen so we will have to set its display here to inline block display inline block let's save it and reload so our button is again back now we have to make it dynamic so let's get back here to make our navigation bar functional we have to add a special attribute the navigation container and the special attribute will be data visible if you are not familiar with data attribute these are custom attributes that we create and add to our html elements to manipulate with javascript so normally by default we want our navigation to be closed when someone clicks on the icon then the navigation will open so for now we'll set data attribute value to false let's save it here now let's get back to the css file and let's first remove the navigation bar from the screen as default so what i'm going to do is i'm going to use css transform and translate x we'll set it 100 percent so let's save it here this is actually removing the navigation on the x-axis 100 percent that means its whole width so it will get out of the screen now if i save it here and reload you will not see it anymore let's see why it is not working oh actually i misspelled i have written transition it's not transition it's transform let's save it here and now let's reload to see what happens so now you can actually see the menu bar has removed out of the screen now our logo has come to the middle but we want it here it should be on the right side now let's fix our logo now our container divs display is set to flex but we don't need display flex for mobile version so we can just set its display back to block now let's save it and let's see if it is working or not so our logo is on the left now but it's not too much close to the border so let's give some margin left to it i'm adding margin left to the logo container i will add to rem of margin left okay so now it's in the right place but you can see that everything is looking a bit squeezy so let's add a bit of space to the container let's add on rem of padding let's see how on rem looks here okay so now everything looks perfect now make our navigation functional now so let's go to our javascript file now in javascript first of all let's make some variable that we will require let's make the navigation toggle button 
So I can name it nap toggle btn and it will be equal to document dot query selector. In here, we will have to give the name of the class that we are targeting, that is nav hyphen toggle. Now let's make the navigation variable. So let's name it navigation. And now let's say document query selector. And inside here, we'll give the class name. That's actually nav container. Now let's check if we got the elements correctly or not. We can print those two variables on the console. Let's save it and let's go to the console to see if it is working or not. Console. So we found both of them. Now let's go back to the JS file. We don't need the console anymore. Now I'll add event listener to the navigation toggle button. We listen for a click and I'll pass an arrow function here. And we'll keep track of the navigation using data variables value. If the data variables value is false, that means our navigation is closed. And when we will click on this button, then we'll change its values to true. And when it is true, it will open again. Now we'll have to write some CSS for that. So let's write TC navigation. And I'm using an attribute selector. If inside the TC navigation data variable value is equal to true, then we want translate x to be 0%. So let's save it. So this means when the attribute value is true, the navigation will slide back to the screen and we'll do that with JavaScript. So first, let's get the value of our attribute. So we'll store it in another variable. I'll name it visibility. Now we are extracting the value of data visible and storing it in this variable. Now we can validate it. For that, we'll be using if else condition. Now, before going to the condition, I want to show you something. The value we'll be getting from the data visible attribute will be string. Let's save it here. Okay, let's comment out this past or it will show an error or let's remove it. Let's reload and see if we click here, the value is false, but it's not actually a Boolean value. It's a string. You have to always remember that we don't need the console anymore. We are going to write a condition. If visibility is true, we want to change its value to false. We will use another function that is set attribute and it takes two values, the attribute we are targeting and the value we want to set on it. So we can write data visible and we want to set its value to true. Let's save it and now let's see if we click here what happens. Let's check it's working or not. When we click on the button, you can see that the navigation is opening. Okay, so it's working. Now let's create the closing functionality. So what we will have to do, we will create the else condition. Just copy this line. I'm going to paste it here and just set its value to false and let's save it. Now let's reload and give it a try. So it's working properly. So let's add some transition to it. Let's go to the CSS and now let's add some transition to it. Let's reload and see how it looks right now. Okay, so it's a lot smoother than before. But it's converting the logo. I don't want that. 
So we'll increase the logos Z index. Let's add position relative to it because Z index doesn't work on position static element. So let's reload the file and give it a try. So it's working. Okay, the mobile version is almost complete. The last thing we want is to change the HTML font size. Everything looks a bit larger considering mobile screen. So let's decrease the HTML font size and everything will apparently shrink. That's the advantage we get using RAM. Let's set it to 42% and now let's save it. Now let's reload, much better than before. So it's fully functional and perfect in mobile screen. Now we have to make it responsive for the medium and large screens. When it exceeds 560 pixels, it doesn't look good. So we want to fix it. So we'll add another media query. And this will be max with 769 pixels. And we are going to set header width to 100%. Now save it and reload. So this media query will work over 560 pixels and up to 769 pixels. Now let me change the HTML font size. Now let's reload the file and this is looking much better now. This will be enough for medium screens and now and when it comes under 560 pixels, the navigation is collapsing and the hamburger menu comes out. So we have made our navigation responsive for small and medium screens. Now we'll make it look good on large screens. That means over 769 and up to 1024 pixels. So we'll add another media query to it. and max width will be 1024 pixels and we'll set HTML font size to 52% and save it. And now let's see what happens. Let's reload and see it. Oh, actually we forgot to add pixels here. Let's add pixel here and let's save the file and let's reload. So it's working properly and looks decent. When it's over 1024 pixels, the whole menu bar expands. Everything becomes larger. And when it is under 1024 pixels, everything shrinks at same the ratio. This is the biggest advantage we can get from using CSS responsive units like RAM. Just by decreasing the font size, we have shrunk the entire navigation, the text, padding, everything. When it gets under 769 pixels, it shrinks again. When it gets even after 560 pixels, our hamburger menu comes out. Okay, it looks good. But there is one last detail to add. In the demo version, the menu icon changed between opening and closing. Let's implement that here. So, for that, let's go to Font Awesome and go to Icon. And now search for Close. We'll be using this icon. We don't need to copy this. We just need to know the class name. Fa times circle is what we need. So let's just go to the JavaScript file and switch the class name on click. So let me show you. We'll write nav toggle btn class list dot remove. This particular listing class that is in here and the class is favars. And now at the new class, I'm going to copy this line and paste it here. 
And now we are going to add the class of pa times circle. And now we'll copy these two lines and bring them in the else block and just switch them. Let's just save it. So what actually I'm doing here is when someone clicks on this icon, I'm remove the bar class that makes it look like a bar and adding the circle class to make it look like circle. And when someone clicks on it again, I'm removing the circle class and adding the bar class again. So that's nothing hard. So let's go to the browser and reload to see if it is working or not. So we can see that our icon is changing. So it's an easy way to change the icon with JavaScript. Let's just review our navigation one more time to make sure there are no issue. So first of all, I'm going to close this and see it is in the poly screen. There are no issues here. Everything is fine. So we let's inspect and see it on responsive mode. When it is above 1024 pixel, it looks good. And when it is less than 1024 pixels, the navigation shrinks and adapts to the screen. It looks perfect here and it goes under 769 pixels and it shrinks again and fit the screen. And when it goes under 560 pixels, the horizontal navigation hides and hamburger icon shows up. And when you click on the hamburger icon, the navigation comes out. So this is how to create a responsive mobile ready navigation bar, which looks perfect on large screen, mobile screen, medium screen, anything. So I hope you have learned something good and useful. So with this, we have completed our navigation bar and for today we are done. So see you on the next one. Until then, goodbye.